effects may include constipation, hallucinations, paralysis, suicidal thoughts, loss of eyesight, abnormal heart rhythms, and life-threatening allergic reactions. How many times have you gone to a doctor and been prescribed a medicine that fails to work or has side effects worse than the actual problem you were trying to solve? In the United States alone, in the year 2017, the prescription drug expenditure was about $360.1 billion. And this number is increasing by tens of billions of dollars every year. But imagine, if for neurological disorders, instead of being prescribed drugs that were foreign and possibly detrimental to your body, your doctor prescribed you a drug whose side effects were smiles, happiness, and the need to get up and dance. What if your doctor prescribed you a drug whose name was music. Music has been used to treat neurological conditions such as Parkinson's, depression, OCD, and autism. I'm here today to testify for the therapeutic power of music and its ability to heal in ways prescription drugs cannot. I'd like you to imagine what it would feel like if for two whole minutes your left arm was continuously flapping, your eyes were constantly rolling, your jaw was clenching so hard that it felt like your teeth were about to break. And every 10 seconds, you were forced to let out a loud, high-pitched screech. This was how I lived at the young age of six, seven days a week, every waking moment. And these were only some of my symptoms. But it wasn't always like this. Before these symptoms surfaced, I lived a life very similar to other kids my age. I went to school, I played with my friends, and going to the movie theaters and dinners was never a problem for me. These involuntary movements and sounds were very minor and had no real impact on my life. <laughs> then one day, my mom came into my room to wake me up for school, like she always did. Except that morning, I woke up a different person. I had zero control over my own body. I was yanking my neck from side to side, screaming and kicking my legs violently. And starting from that day, I could no longer go to school or play with my friends. And my family could no longer go to our favorite Chinese restaurant for a nice meal because I couldn't stay quiet or just sit in my chair. And suddenly, everything I wanted to do or loved to do was made impossible. My life had drastically changed overnight. In search for a cure, we flew to New York to meet with the best pediatric neuropsychologist my parents could find. I'll never forget that doctor's office. When I entered, I remember feeling excited and hopeful, confident that I was this close to the answer to all of my problems. And I knew that soon I would have a remedy and be able to return back to school and everything would be the way it was. So you can imagine how heartbreakingly devastating it was when the doctors diagnosed me with Tourette syndrome and then told me that there was no cure for this terrible thing that had hijacked my body and taken over my life. I can tell you that walking out of that office, I was crushed. I finally knew what was wrong, and I was given an answer, but I had no solution. At this young age, I had been sentenced to a life living in a body I had virtually no control over. The best way to really describe Tourette's syndrome is something I'm sure you're all very familiar with, the hiccups. You can try to stop yourself from the act, but eventually there's going to be a loud and explosive hiccup. And people can ask you to stop, but there is just nothing you can do about it until the sensation passes and the hiccups have taken their course. That's essentially what Tourette's syndrome is, a series of involuntary motor and verbal tics. As you might expect, I started to hate my life. I mean, really hate. I hated myself, I hated my syndrome, and I hated the doctors for not having answers. All they could do was try and suppress the symptoms but every single drug they prescribed me had side effects worse than the actual disorder. One drug put me in a wheelchair because my legs had gotten so numb that I couldn't move them. Another one caused me to hallucinate. I would see green people running after me, threatening to boil me in a pot and drink me a soup. And when I say it out loud now, it sounds ridiculous. But to six-year-old me, it was real and it was scary. We tried drug after drug to find something that would bring me some sort of relief but every single attempt just ended up making things worse. I knew there had to be a cure, and I believed that it was something deep inside of me that led to my healing. I discovered a drug that could radically change my life with no negative side effects. This drug goes by the name of music. 
I always had a great appreciation for music. I loved to sing, write songs about enchanted forests, and dance to the tunes from the latest Bollywood movies. I equally loved riding my bike, playing with my dolls, and reading books. There was nothing in me that prioritized music. But as the hopelessness and the depression within me grew, and as my days got darker, we searched for anything that would provide me with a moment of serenity, anything that could get me through the day. I often lay on my bedroom floor after an attack of ticks, feeling exhausted, hurting, and in despair. My equally desperate mother would attempt to soothe me and herself by playing some music. She would play peaceful, soothing music, and we'd lie together on the floor and allow the beats of the drums to uplift us. And as the rhythms and the tunes unfolded, our spirits would rise, our moods would be lighter, and we would be rejuvenated. Very soon, and rather unknowingly, I became an addict of this newfound drug. When I'd feel myself slipping into my bouts of sadness and self-pity, I'd play all kinds of music to change my mood. Mozart, Chopin, Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, anything. And after a long day of school and the continuous suppression of my tics, I would rush home to my piano, knowing that each one of those 88 keys would set me free. I believe that music helped me recover from my dark place. Eventually, I became curious about how much better I was doing and the role that music played in it. So I set out to search, and I found that my claims of music as medicine did not stand alone. A highly successful US Congresswoman, Gabby Giffords, was shot in the head and lost her ability to speak. Her doctors brought in music therapists to work with her. Because the ability to sing and the ability to speak lay in two separate parts of the brain, her therapist encouraged her to sing her thoughts since she was incapable of speaking them. Through this technique, the Congresswoman was finally able to regain her speech. Music healed Gabby Giffords. I'm sure many of you here have heard of Demi Lovato. For those of you who don't know her, she's an international superstar who suffered from extreme depression and an eating disorder, bulimia. In an interview with Spotify, Demi Lovato affirmed that music saved her life. She said, it gave me a reason to live when I was being bullied and when I was dealing with serious depression. It gave me something to relate to. It gave me hope and it gave me drive and motivation to persevere and achieve my dreams. Music healed Demi Lovato. And would you believe that Ed Sheeran, one of the most successful singer-songwriters today, a four-time Grammy Award winner and a record-breaking artist spent his childhood suffering from a stutter that prevented him from expressing himself and communicating. In a speech he gave at the American Stuttering Institute Gala in 2015, Ed Sheeran revealed that the secret to curing his stutter came from his love for rap music. He would get inspired by his favorite rap artists, copy their flow, and he wouldn't stutter. Music healed Ed Sheeran. I still have Tourette syndrome. I deal with it every day, every hour. It's my constant companion. Not a single day goes by where I don't have involuntary motor and verbal tics. But the most amazing thing is that when I sing, play an instrument, or even just listen to music, I don't tick. I've been on stage numerous times in highly stressful situations with thousands of people watching me. And while I do tick before my performance, once the music starts, the tics take a back seat. So why and how does music have this incredible effect on people? Well, scientists have discovered that music causes our brains to release a natural painkiller known as oxytocin and a feel-good chemical, dopamine. Dopamine is essential for a healthy nervous system and strongly impacts our emotional health. Music can affect our heart rate, our breathing, and pulse rate as it lowers cortisol levels. Music can also reduce anxiety and lift our mood. Music stimulates more areas of the brain than just about any other human activity. What it does for us goes beyond conventional medicine. It is the ribbon that connects our minds and bodies to work together in unity to eventually heal us. The more I sang, the more I played, the more I swayed, the happier, healthier, and more peaceful I became. I believe music helped me recover from my dark place. And as my journey continues, I've made it my personal mission to spread this message. Music can heal you. You don't have to be a professional singer. Shower singing is just as powerful. You don't have to know how to play an instrument. Clap your hands, stomp your feet, allow your beating heart to keep pace with the music. You really don't have to do anything other than to just listen and allow the music to work its magic. 
those days that I lay on my bedroom floor, hopeless and at a loss, as my body ached and my vision of the future seemed disheartening, I can't bear to imagine what would have happened if my mom hadn't had played those songs. What if I never took the time to drown myself in the beats and the rhythms and feel the vibration of the energy heal my every cell? What if I never strummed my guitar or sang my feelings at the top of my lungs? What if I never found music? 10 years ago, my body was so out of control and my verbal tics were so loud that visiting a local library was not even an option. But last summer, I performed my own original music for an audience of 10,000 people. And as I sang and performed for 27 minutes, I was in complete blissful control. So I may have written my own music and composed my own lyrics, but in reality, it was the music that composed me. In our lifetimes, we will all know someone with a neurological disorder. If it's not a family member, it could be a friend or a coworker. Please help me spread this message. Music is the number one prescription that's uplifting lives and healing us from within. Thank you. <laughs>